Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over the January 2025 Algebra 1 Regents exam. In this video, we're going to be focusing on part two, which are six short response questions, each worth two points. A link to this test can be found in the description of this video. And this video is a part of a bigger series where I go over every single question from every single part in this exam. So if you want me to go over part one, three, or four, those videos can be found in the description of this one. That being said, we're going to start off with number 25, which asks us, the graph below models Sally's drive to the store. State an interval when Sally is traveling at a constant speed. So in this case, we have speed in miles per hour as our Y, and we have time in minutes as our X. So when she's traveling at a constant speed, constant means not changing. So what interval, right, or what range or what values of X or her time in minutes is her speed not changing? Well, if we look at these points, right? Here, her speed was five, then her speed was 10, then her speed was 25. So is her speed changing in this interval? Yes, right? Literally, her speed is increasing, it's going up. We see the graph going up. But let's say at five minutes, what is the speed at five minutes? At five minutes, her speed is 35 miles per hour. And then at six minutes, her speed is 35 miles per hour. At seven minutes, her speed is 35 miles per hour. At eight minutes, it's still 35 miles per hour. And at nine minutes, it's still 35 miles per hour. So wherever there's a flat line, that's when your graph isn't changing. That's when you're at a constant. So a flat line in your graph represents a constant. So she's at a constant speed from, all the way from five to nine. So the interval has to be from five to nine. Remember that it includes five and nine because we have we don't have an open circle here. So if there was an open circle here, then we would have to write five is uh, less than x, which is less than nine. But because there is a closed, there is no open circles here. Everything is shaded in. Everything is filled in. We can write the interval as an inequality, right? Where where it says that x, her time in minutes, has to be either from five, any any number between five and nine. And in order to explain our reasoning, all we have to say is over the interval, five is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to nine, Sally's speed remains a constant 35 miles per hour. That's all we have to say, right? Her speed does not change. Number 26 says the graph, graph the function f of x is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 3. So if we go into this calculator and we plug in x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 3, we go and we hit graph. This is what our, well, this is what our graph is going to look like. In order for us to graph this function, we're going to have to actually put in points onto our graph. So let's look at some points to put in. So as we can see here, our vertex or our minimum is going to be negative two comma negative one. So here we have negative two and negative one. So this is the first point that I'm going to put in. Okay. That is this tip right here. So we need, we always need the vertex or the tip of the parabola in our graph. Okay. So then we just need to plug in the points around it. So at negative one, we're zero. Okay. And at negative three, we're also at zero. So we need to put these two points in then at negative four, we're at three. So at negative four, we're at one, two, and three. And then again, at positive, sorry, at, um, at zero, we're three, we're at one, two, three, that's the next point. And we cannot plug in any more points because um, at point negative five will be at eight, which is outside of this graph. So now that you've had them, you have the most amount of points on your graph with the, uh, all you have to do is just connect them with a straight line. Oh, or in this case, a curved line. So you want to connect like so, and then you want to put two arrows at the end of them to indicate that the function continues going. What you don't want to do, what I'm, and what I mistakenly mistakenly said, was connect them with a straight line. You do not want to connect them with a straight line. Your graph should not look like this. It should not be rigid. It should be one fluid curved line throughout all those points, okay? And then it's asking us state the equation of the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is just what makes this symmetrical, okay? What divides this into two equal halves? And that line 
is always going to be through the vertex, okay? So if you don't understand that, all you need to know is that the axis of symmetry is the line that passes through the vertex that goes up and down, okay? So in this case, this is the line of symmetry. So this line is a vertical line, right? So the equation for a vertical line isn't going to be y equals, it's actually going to be x equals. So it's going to be x equals and then the value of that line. So in this case, this line passes through the point negative 2. So x is equal to negative 2 is going to be the axis of symmetry. If you have a horizontal line, the equation is y equals. But if you have a vertical line, the equation is x equals. Right? And it's x equals the point that it passes through, which is negative 2. Okay? So that's how you get full credits on this question. Moving on to number 27. It says a function f of x is shown in the table below. State an appropriate value for m in the table so that f of x remains a function. So remember, a function is a relationship between the x and the y where every x has one y output. Or every x maps onto only one y. So if we look at this relationship, we can see that 0 maps onto 6, 3 maps onto 2, 2 maps onto 7, 6 to 5, 1 to 8, 5 to 4, 4 to 3, and this, this magic value maps onto 9. So we can see here that there's one arrow per every x to one y value, right? Every x only has one in output. Every x input only has one y output. If we put m as 4, this would no longer be a function. Because if m was equal to 4, that means that now you have one x input that has two outputs. Look, if 4 was equal to 9 and 4 was equal to 3, this input of 4 has two y outputs, which means this is not a function. This x maps on to two different y values, meaning it's not a function. So in order for you to find the value of m that makes this a function, it just has to be a value that's not stated yet. So um, it, it has to be a number that's not 0, 3, 2, 6, 1, 4, or 5. So we can say that 7, that m could be 7, right? So m can equal to 7, okay? That way, every single x maps onto only one y. We should not have any more than one x in this top row, okay? So explain your reasoning. m has to be a number that is not already listed as an x value. If m is equal to 7, then every x input has 1 and only, only 1 y output. And every x maps onto only one y, okay? Thus making it a function. Thus making it a function. So that's all you have to state. You have to state at least one of these reasonings, and then you just have to state a number that's not already listed there. Number 28 asks us to solve x squared plus 8x is equal to 33, 4x by completing the square. So in this case, completing the square is just the technique we use to package this value, okay? So in this case, completing the square involves taking b over 2, squaring it, and adding to it to both sides. So this b value is going to be the value in front of the x that is not squared. So in this case, the x that is not squared is this x right here, and the number in front of it is 8. So that means that this is our b. The number in front of the uh, a, or in front of the x squared would be our a, and a number without an x is our c, okay? Uh, so we know that our, a, uh, our b is 8, so we have 8 over 2 squared, which would be 4 squared, which would actually be 16. So we're going to add 16 to both sides, okay? So now we have x squared plus 8x plus 16 is equal to 49, okay? So now all we have to do is we have to go ahead and simplify this, right? we have to factor this out in order for us to be able to solve for x. So in this case, what does x squared plus 8x plus 16 factor into? Well, that just factors into x plus 4 squared, okay? How do I know that? Well, 
I know that um, a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, right? Whenever you complete the square, it'll always turn into either x plus a number squared or x minus a number squared. And that number is just going to be the square root of the number you added. So if we added 16, we take the square root of 16, which is 4, and we just add x plus 4 squared. Okay, that's all we have to do here. Um, yeah, that's a shortcut. If you wanted to foil this out, you could. You could do x squared plus 8x plus 16. Two numbers that multiply into 16 that add into 8 are 4 and 4. So x squared plus 4x plus 4x um, plus 16. We, then we can factor out x to get x plus 4, 4 to get x plus 4, and you'd get x plus 4 squared. Same thing, okay? So we know that this is equal to 49, and we know that we're want, we want to solve for x, okay? So notice here we have x plus 4 squared and 49. These are two perfect squares. So if we take the square root of both sides, we know that x plus 4 has to equal to 7, and x plus 4 <coughs> has to equal to negative 7. Whenever you take the square root, remember that negative 7 squared is equal to 49, and 7 squared is also equal to 49. So there's two values that x plus 4 can equal to, okay? Um, so yeah, that's just the rule here. So now we just have to solve for the two values of x. So x can either equal to 3, or x can equal to what? Well, x can equal to negative 11, because I can just subtract 4 from both sides to get negative 11. So x is equal to 3 or negative 11. That's going to be the answer. Uh, number 29 says, if f of x is equal to negative 3x minus 5 over 2, algebraically determine the value of x when f of x is equal to 22. So in this case, this is equal to f of x, right? So this gives you a y value given an x input, right? So now you want to determine the value of x that makes this equal to 22. f of x is the same thing as saying y, right? So determine the value of x when y is equal to negative 22. So just replace f of x with what it's equal to, negative 22. So negative 22 is equal to negative 3x minus 5 divided by 2. Now you can multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the denominator here. You get negative 44 is equal to negative 3x minus 5. If you add 5 to both sides, you get negative 39 is equal to negative 3x. Divide both sides by 3 to get x on its own. You get 13 is equal to x. Okay, so that means that when you plug in 13 for x, you get negative 22 as your answer. Number 30 asks us to rationalize the denominator of the fraction below and to express the solution in simplest term. So right here we have an irrational, um, sorry about that, we have, we have a radical, right, which is an irrational number technically. If we, if we take the square root of 2, this is irrational because it has a non-terminating and um, a non-repeating decimal. Right? Again, you don't need to know that here. In order to rationalize the denominator, all you need to do is multiply the top and bottom by the denominator. So in this case, rationalizing the denominator, you will always have a radical in the denominator. In order to rationalize it, literally just multiply it by whatever's there. So if we have a radical 2, multiply the top and the bottom by a radical 2. Rad 2 times radical 2 is the same thing as saying radical 2 squared, which is the same thing as just canceling out the radical, which leaves you with 2. So now we have 4 radical 2 divided by 2. So notice how our denominator is a rational number now. 2 has a terminating decimal. It's 2.0. There's no decimal. So that's it. We now have a rational denominator, but we need to express the solution in simplest form. Here we have 4 times radical 2 divided by 2. So we can actually take out 2 from the denominator, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and we can divide this 4 that's multiplying this radical 2 by 2. So now we have 2 radical 2 over 1, or just 2 radical 2, okay? So always remember, you cannot divide this 2 by this 2. You cannot, if radical 2 over 2 does not equal to radical 1, okay? Don't fall for that trap. The only thing you can divide is whatever's on the outside of the radical. In this case, 4 is divisible by 2, so you can divide it only because it's on the outside of the radical. And that is the end of part two. So that's all six questions from this video done. If you want to continue going over this test, a link to part three can be found in this description um, and a link to part four as well. If you want help with other region, other region subjects like living environment, algebra two, physics, US history, the links to those playlists and those videos can also be found in this description. If you have any questions, 
as to what I did in this video, please let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you have a nice night.